Good evening. This is James Cook, Assistant Professor of Social Science at the University of Maine at Augusta, and you're here for another week of our Undergraduate Social Network Analysis course, ComSoc 375. What we're looking at here is a familiar software environment for you by now, Node Excel. What I want to do today is I want to collect a little bit of a Twitter search network uh, on a political subject that we've looked at before, the campaign to fix the debt, uh, particularly a Twitter search uh, for a hashtag of fix the debt. We're going to use the result to talk about uh, the difference between thinking about dyads and measures like in degree as opposed to triad censuses. And what a triad census, uh, showing all the different sorts of the different structures of triads, can tell you usefully about the structure of communication uh, in an online advocacy environment. To get started, uh, I imported some data from a November 3rd um, Twitter communication network. Everyone who used the hashtag fix the debt. That is the boundary of our network. What defines the relation here is following. Not mentioning, but following. Uh, following in Twitter means that when the person you're following posts a message or the organization you're following posts a message, it shows up in your stream and you will read it. This is a directional tie. Uh, sometimes the ties are reciprocated, sometimes they aren't. So this is the result I have here, and it's an edge list of how many? 75 minus the two rows up at the top equals an n of 73. The number of nodes that I have is 73. So we'll note that down. We can calculate some graph metrics. I'll ask for in degree, out degree, and clustering coefficient, which we described uh, in the lecture for this week, week 10. It is equivalent to ego network density. It measures the portion of all ties that could be surrounding an ego among alters uh, compared to the uh, uh, actual number. So it's a fraction. It will be between 0 and 1. So if I calculate those metrics, which I've already done, I'll have in degree, I'll have out degree, I'll have a clustering coefficient. And the first thing I want to show you uh, using this visualization and this organization of uh, vertices here is that we don't get the same results for in degree that we might get for clustering coefficient. If I want to sort from largest to smallest, I get a top 10 list of Bowl Simpson fight for jobs, fix the debt, budget hawks, the can kicks back, third way, economy, and a, a few other individuals, a DC decoder. I could take those individuals and let's, let's give those individuals the top 10, which would be 3 through 12. Let's give them a particular shape. Let's make them uh, diamonds. through 12 I believe and let's make them diamonds size 2 and let's make them purple because I like the color purple so I'm gonna do that and we'll see that there they are now let's head over here over to clustering coefficient and clicking on the triangle here we can order from largest to smallest. Now, if I select these top 10 individuals, 
How many of them are going to be diamonds? 3 to 12. One. Just one of them is going to be a diamond. What does this tell us? We, we can tell that by looking over here at the right. Uh, and that one individual node who has that account is right here. Visual budget. All of the other individuals who have a high clustering coefficient are not themselves having a high in degree. This measures two different things. In degree measures those who are followed most often by others who are using the fix the debt hashtag. What does uh, clustering coefficient measure? It indicates those who are following tight-knit groups of, of fix the debt tweeters. These are the people who are hanging on to the central cluster. Those folks in the middle that are right in, 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 in the thick of things. The ones that are getting followed. The ones that are getting paid attention to. They're the hangers on. This is something that thinking about uh, triads and triangles, which you can kind of see here in a, a, a curvy shape. Or if I wanted to make these straight lines, you could see them literally. You literally see a set of triangles. There's transitivity here. People belonging to more than one. People belonging to people who communicate and follow other people. That's what transitivity is all about. You can see it right here. That's visual. But we can do more than that when we think about people who are tweeting about this fix the debt idea. Uh, we can actually take a look at those triads and we can figure out what kind of relationships are happening there. Uh, not simply in the actual visual shape of a triangle, but to think about what do those triangles consist of? Are they reciprocated? Uh, are there a lot of elements like these in which there's some kind of following relationship, but there's something left out, an intransitive relationship. How many of them are there? How often do they happen? For this kind of information, Node Excel um, is not going to satisfy us. We're going to have to export our data. We can do that through a PIAC file. It'll add edge weights, which is fine. And we could then say we want to do a fix the debt. Uh, PIAC. And we'll save it there. We could then import that. And we could create something called a triad census. After we, of course, import a text uh, file through Payek, and we go to the right folder, and that was uh, called Fix the Dead. Okay, and okay, that creates then. Uh, a, a PIEC file, which then we could import from there and turn into a regular uh, UCINet file. Okay, which is right here. You could then display that. And that's right here. And it's showing all the ones, uh, our following relations. They're not necessarily reciprocated. We see M. Belleville follows uh, Lilobri, but Lilobri does not follow M. Belleville. 
it's great. Now that we have that here, what can we do? We can conduct a triad census. And we can do that by going to network, triad census. Okay, and we can, uh, that is called fix the debt. And it's going to give us a set of numbers. Okay, you'll notice right down here we have a list of labels to remind us if we don't have prel uh, and we don't have prel page 142, we could remind ourselves what each of these triads look like. And we have a set of numbers. It's amazing. Uh, isn't it how many tens of thousands of uh, triads there are in a network of 73 individuals? But it's true, there are many, many different combinations that are possible. Um, some of these numbers look really small, some of them look really huge. Uh, I remember a triad is just any three uh, uh, nodes in combination. Is it really so huge that we would expect our 003 triad, which means that there are three unconnected triads, would we expect 56,507? Is that big? Or is it kind of small? What about 300, which is at the other end, which is a set of three nodes that are completely connected in both directions for all three uh, nodes? Is 18 a lot to expect? What would we expect by chance alone? Fortunately, uh, we can actually find out using UCI Net, and this is where UCI Net starts to get really interesting and powerful. The truth is that Node Excel looks better. It generates sociograms that are prettier. It can do things with bending lines. It can um, allow you to put in pictures and labels that are nice and slick and allow you to really understand in an intuitive way what's going on, but UCI Net has some brute force behind it, which is pretty impressive. What I'm going to show you is how you can actually take a look at a network like this, the real one from November 3rd, 2012, of people talking about this idea of fixing the debt using this hashtag. Uh, to talk about deficit reduction in the United States. Uh, and it is, by the way, also a uh, nonprofit corporation that is pushing it, changes in our laws. This is part of how politics happens. We can follow this group and other groups, but we have to figure out, is its structure unusual in some way? To do that, we can head over to data excuse me, we can head over to network and we need to characterize it a little bit. We need to characterize its density. Density overall. Now the density is the number of actual ties divided by the number of possible ties you could have. Since the number of actual ties can't be any bigger than the number of possible ties, and it can be as small as zero actual ties, the result is going to be somewhere between zero and one. A number is equal to 1 if the numerator and the denominator are the same. So I'm going to head to density overall, and I'm going to find that same fix the debt. And we're going to calculate its density. That density is 0 0.026. Multiply it by 100, and you get a percentage. The percentage of fullness in the network, the percent of ties that could be there that are actually there. 2.6% of the ties that could be there in the network are there. Let's take a look at that uh, network again. In this network over here, 2.6% of the ties that could be there are actually there. Okay, that's useful, but why is it useful? It's useful because I would like to do something now. I'd like to go back to UCI Net and I'd like to create a set, a random set, an Erdos Renyi random set of graphs. 
of networks. I would like to create a hundred of them. I'd like them to be directed graphs, ones in which it's possible to send out a tie but not to return it, one in which the density looks just like the one that we studied, 0 0.026, and in which the number of nodes is also a, exactly the same as in our set. We're going to create the same, in essence, set of nodes with the same number of ties in that network. But we're going to randomly shuffle them around. And when we randomly shuffle them around a hundred times, we're going to find out how often, by chance alone, all those different kinds of triads would appear. What I'm talking about looks like this. Let's generate a hundred random social networks right now. Ones that have the same basic properties as the network we're interested in. Okay, so here's the first one. Now, you know, it's not fitting exactly because it has 73 nodes, but you get the idea. There's a set of zeros and ones in here. Oh, here's our second. Here's our third one. These are a hundred. I could keep going all day long. You notice the scroll bar here is taking a while to go down. 73 by 73 matrices, a hundred of them now, containing random connections. This is great. Now what do I do? Now I go back to network. And I go back to triad census. And I want to, I believe it was called ER for Erdosh Renyi. And there is the name of my file that contains a hundred random networks, a hundred random matrices that also have the property of having 73 nodes and a density of 0 0.026 in terms of ties. And I am going to now create triad counts for each of them. Okay, this is a bit messy, but let's take a look at that in our visually nicer spreadsheet within UCI net that is going to be in professional sociology uh, social networks and I'm looking for ER okay and then an ending that says TRI because that's the ending that it puts on the end when it's created a triad census Okay, and now you should be able to notice uh, a few things. If we look over here on the left, you'll see in the rows a set of names of different kinds of triad structures. If you don't understand what those are, head back to Chapter 6 in Prel and take a look at this page, which describes what each of those different structures look like. There are 16 different possible triad structures in an undirected network like this one. Now we have a series of columns. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I could keep on going all the way over to 100. And in each of those, in this random set of ties, it's said to me, wow, you know, you have... 52,900, 53,100, 52,960, so on and so forth. A set of triads with that 003 structure. How many 300 structures do we expect? The ones that are completely connected, where every one of the three nodes in the triad is connected in a directional tie to every other one. In our random networks, you can generate it a hundred times. And let me look again, because I just generated this as I'm shooting this video. I don't see a one. It's an incredibly rare event by chance alone. And yet we know that in the, I'm looking, 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 
we know that in the fix the debt network it appears 18 times with the same number of nodes 73 and the same density 0 0.026 so clearly the fix the debt hashtag network is not a random network when it comes to uh, these 300 structure triads wow how can we think about this a little more formally well we could take this information we I, I just select it all then we can copy it and we can paste it over into a spreadsheet which I did here with another set of 100 okay and then I said hey why don't I take the average of these okay the average for each of those rows of all those hundred results and this is what I ended up with a set of numbers that said over those hundred what kind of result did we get on average I can compare that then just by eyeballing it to what actually happened and I can see some striking results I can see this striking result I can see that striking result these two striking results an incredibly striking result here striking result in which for 111d we have 223 instances of that structure 111d is looking a little like that it is a triad in which two nodes have a reciprocal relationship and then there's a third node that relates to one of them it's occurring astronomically more often than chance would predict okay now you can take a look at those and think about what they're like but we can do more than that we can compare it to a general trend for web-based network activity and offline social network activity why can we do that because uh, there's actually a paper that's done this okay and it's by Ron Milo in the Journal of Science in 2004 in which he's taking a look at uh, triads the very same triads you read about for this week and he's looking at it in a number of natural and created networks and he's finding out how often uh, by chance alone or uh, how often more of, excuse me how much more often than by chance alone or how much less often than by chance alone uh, you actually observe uh, these triads in existence on the bottom line here we see a linguistic network to be or not to be this is a Shakespearean uh, line and if a phrase or a word in this case uh, is seen next to another word it's a connection well linguistic networks like that in all kinds of languages English French Spanish Japanese this is really cool uh, exhibit the same kind of relationships uh, certain kinds of triads these are the set that you were looking at earlier occur more often than chance alone would predict chance alone is represented in this horizontal line if it's above that line it's happening more often than chance would predict other kinds of uh, triads occur less often than chance would predict uh, there's there's more than that okay you could talk about uh, neural networks 
they have a different profile. In sea urchins, in Drosophila fruit flies, pretty cool. Okay, you get different sorts of triads, different kinds of structures trying to do different sorts of things. Pretty neat. And then you have here, what do these two icons indicate? They indicate offline social networks and online social networks. And a very distinct profile with one very low set here. That's set number six. Set number six is what? Read about it. It's on page 144, the forbidden triangle. Why is it a forbidden triangle? Well, let's take a look at it and see what that's about. Uh, let's see if I can. There's a reciprocal tie going this way between one node and another, and then another reciprocal tie between the same node and, and, a, and a third node, but no tie in between. Mark Granovetter makes an argument. His argument, which is summarized here, is that when that tie is strong, when that tie is strong, you should not be able to find a structure like this. Very rarely. Far less often than Chancellor would predict, because what happens to them? They turn into this. A tie is formed at the bottom between those two nodes that were not otherwise tied. In terms of friendship, it means, look, if you have a really strong friendship with one person and a really strong friendship with a, a second person, those two people have a very hard time not getting to know one another. They're going to get to know one another. It, 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 it's so strong a prediction when you have strong ties to two people that it almost looks as though, if we head back out, it almost looks as though so much less often than by chance, it looks like that uh, unconnected, untransitive triad is forbidden. Okay, bottom line, if you do a little bit of statistical uh, figuring, you can calculate something called a z-score, which if you've taken research methods you might know about, and you can further standardize that uh, so that all values go between positive one and negative one, and you'll get a result that looks like this. In this result, we've taken the Milo data for online social networks and offline social networks, which have the same general pattern. We've taken a look at the forbidden triangle, and I've replaced those numbers with the codes for the unique structures of networks that you can find on page 142 of the Prel text. And that big black asterisks are how much more often than by chance, how much less often than by chance, we see certain triads in the Fix the Debt tweeting network. What do we see first of all? Where do most of the asterisks lie? Most of them lie generally along the same line that characterizes other online social networks or offline social networks. Those completely connected triads, those perfectly transitive triads, 300, zero, zero, they occur more often than by chance alone, but for about what's typical for a, a social network. 
other transitive triads appear just about as often as we predict, you know, give or take a little bit of space. But there's a huge spike here in one other form. Okay. And a couple of other spikes that are a little bit less noticeable, but are right next to them in 111D and 111U. What are those three forms? Look at them. Okay. There's also a similar uh, spike over at 021U. It's a much smaller spike, but it is statistically significant. More than two times the standard deviation uh, based off of the uh, 100 random graphs. What's different about them? They are graphs that are intransitive. They are graphs in which there's a relationship between one central node and two peripheral nodes that don't interact with each other. Again and again, 0, 2, 1, U, 1, 1, 1, D, 1, 1, 1, U, and 2, 0, 1. Each have the characteristic of a central node, two peripheral nodes interacting with it, and no transitivity between. The forbidden triangle is the one that's really happening hugely, much more often than by chance alone, indicating that there's a centralization to this network, which is really important, which is really unusual, and because we can compare it to the data from the Milo paper, it's unusual even for uh, regular offline social networks and online social networks in relationships between websites. There's something really unusual and different about this Fix the Debt campaign on Twitter using the hashtag. Something that is unusually central about it. And that's prettier to me than a picture because it's telling me something that isn't just intuitive. It's analytical. It's telling me I need to look at those organizations in that set in a little bit more detail. I don't have the final answer for you here, but if you're interested in doing either network research for its own sake and you want to know why it matters, or if you're interested in looking at the conjunction of online networks and politics in the United States and you want to know what tool to use for it, here's a great example. Okay, that's enough for uh, this week in our lecture. Uh, I look forward to your questions. I look forward to your emails, to your phone calls, and also for our regular uh, weekly Wednesday uh, night online hangout through Google+. Uh, Please look up the details for that on the syllabus, and I look forward to any questions you might have. Have a good night.